In the first video, I introduced this claim that we're studying, which says that more than 50% of all car crashes occur within five miles of home. And we are in the process of drawing the distribution, which is a binomial distribution. And hopefully you understand that we're going to use a normal distribution as a good estimate of this binomial distribution, because you can see this starts low, goes up high, and then comes back down and you should recognize that is just our normal distribution with the highest point being at 50 percent. Now here's the deal. Here's the thing you need to understand. If it really is ship shaped like this with 50 percent being in the middle then what would I expect to get as a sample? If this distribution represents all the different possible samples I could get, the ones that are going to occur most often are the ones that are around 50%, if 50% if really is the middle. I mean, you can see from the picture that, that the ones around 50% high have the highest probability of occurring. Should I expect to get a, prob a, a uh, sample whose proportion comes out to be something up in here? Well, no, this has a pretty low probability. Should I expect to get a sample whose proportion is, say, down here around 20%? No, once again, that's, that's a pretty low probability. What I can expect to get is something in this middle range. To say that we're going to test this at a significance level of 1%, what that means is, let me explain it now, this is how we tell when we're significantly far away from the middle. We will be significantly far away from the middle if the probability of my sample proportion occur occurring, if it is less than 1%. So the question is, how far away do I have to be from 50% to come out here so that my, my event from my sample has less than a 1% chance of occurring. Because if it does have a less than a 1% chance of occurring, then that means this null hypothesis cannot be right. It will be rejected. And if this is rejected, then that means we will accept the alternate hypothesis. I know it may sound like a convoluted way of, of, of proving something, but this, this is a process we take. All right, so how do we go about actually showing that? We have four major steps we need to go through. Once we've drawn our picture, we have four major steps. Number one, we need to calculate the sample's proportion, and that is known as a symbol of p hat. That's a p with a caret mark on top of it. Once we find the sample proportion, we're going to use it to calculate its z score. Please remember what a z-score is. A z-score is how far away a number is from the middle, from, from the mean of a distribution. I know you've done z-scores before, but let's go through this process again. To calculate the z-score for the sample proportion, it's going to be the sample proportion, and we subtract from it the mean, but for now we're just writing down the formula. This is what we're assuming to be the middle. And we're going to divide it by the standard deviation. Now, hopefully you understand that every distribution has a different standard deviation, and every distribution type has a slightly different formula for the standard deviation. Well, the formula for the standard deviation for this type of distribution, that is a distribution involving sample proportions, is as follows. It's one big square root and it has a fraction on the inside. The numerator is going to be p, not the sample proportion, but the population proportion that we're assuming to be true. In this case it's going to be 0.5. We're going to multiply that times its complement, which is 1 minus p, but in our textbook we use a special symbol to represent the complement 1 minus p. We represent it with the letter q but that's all it is, just 1 minus p, and we're going to divide it by, and this is still inside, this is still inside the radical sign, the square root sign, we're going to divide it by n, the sample size. So this, this denominator is my standard deviation formula. Step three, we're going to take this z-score and look up its related probability in the z-score table, and we've done that before many, many times. Step four, finally, we're going to see 
if our probability is less than 1% or more than 1%. If it's less than 1%, then we have rejected the null hypothesis, which makes our alternate hypothesis truth. And so we will then state the appropriate conclusion based on where we are in probabilities. So let's go ahead and go through those four major steps. Step number one, calculate P, P hat, the sample proportion. Well, we know that it was 5,720 car crashes did occur within five miles out of 11,000. If we take the calculator, turn it on, and take 5720 divided by 11,000, I get, oh, I get exactly 0.52, which is, that's 52%. So putting this mark on here, on my distribution, 52%. 52% maybe looks about right here. Wow, doesn't look like I'm very far away, does it? This, as, a, as I've got it drawn, this looks like this has a high probability of occurring if the middle really is 50%. But you shouldn't go by looks, especially, especially when I draw them. So we've got to go through the math. Let's see what the math says. Next step number two is to calculate the z-score for this 52%. And once again, it's going to be this 52% minus what we're assuming to be true is 50% or 0.5, 0 0.50 divided by P which is 0.5 times its complement and of course 1 minus 0.5 is also 0.5 all divided by the sample size and that was a sample size of 11,000 so we're divided by a pretty big number okay so in our calculator Step number one, we're going to do 0.52 minus 0.5 equals, so that's 0 0.02, and I'm just going to go ahead now and divide that by the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 11,000. Close the parenthesis around this square root, and that is equal to approximately 4.1. 952 and it goes on and on and we always round z scores to two decimal places so this is going to be 4. Point, this 5 says round the 9 up so it would be 2. Uh, 4.20 okay <clears throat> next step is to look up 4.20 on the z score table my textbook is broken up into positive z-scores and negative z-scores. There we go. Well, as you can see, my, my z-score table only goes up to 3.5. And we're way past that. We're at, we're at uh, 4.20. So, it turns out we are pretty far away. We, we're more than four standard deviations away from the middle, only being just only at 52%. This area to the left of the curve would be 0.9999 we're really interested in more than so it's going to be this area over here any of these values and if we have 0.9999 on this side then this is 0.0001 on this side which is way less than 1% so this was 0.0001 Actually, it's even less than that. Since this number was, this probability was less than 1%, we have rejected the null hypothesis that it's equal to 50%. Therefore, we can make the following statement. The sample data does then support the claim that more than 50% of all car crashes occur within five miles of home. And that completes our example, our first example of, of testing a hypothesis, testing a claim.